thank you for coming at late uh, notice, well, short notice and late in the day. I'm announcing today that I'll be resigning as Premier and as member for Bass. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, my family, uh, my wife Mandy, son Finn and daughter Millie for their support and love. No Premier does this job alone and my family has been outstanding in their support and to my wife Mandy for 20 years she's allowed me the opportunity to serve Tasmania at times at great sacrifice to herself and to our family and I thank her very much for that. It's been an honour and a privilege to serve as Tasmania's 46th Premier. However, the time is now right for me to move on and to attend to other things in my life. The past two years have delivered unforeseen challenges as we've navigated through COVID-19 and focused on rebuilding a stronger Tasmania. During this time, I've quite rightly focused on everyone else's family. Uh, I now want to spend some time focusing on my own. I sincerely want to thank all Tasmanians. I'm not a silver spooner, far from it. I come from a humble background and nothing has given me more pleasure than being able to support our community, especially those who, like me, come from less privileged backgrounds. I want to thank the broader Tasmanian community for the support and for working with me when it was needed over the last few years. Together we have saved hundreds, if not thousands, of Tasmanian lives, and that is something that all Tasmanians should be very proud of. I wish to thank all of my colleagues for their incredible support and efforts over the last two years whilst I've been Premier. I could not have had a more supportive Cabinet uh, nor parliamentary team. Tasmania is in good shape and the team I leave behind has safe hands and a great depth of experience and, importantly, talent. I want to extend my deepest gratitude to the Liberal Party and to the people of Bass who have enabled me this incredible opportunity and entrusted me to represent them in Parliament for the last 20 years. I want to thank all of my incredible staff, both here in the North and especially on Level 11 in Hobart. Um, they've all gone above and beyond in their roles to support our priorities as a government, to support me, none more so than Andrew Finch, my Chief of Staff. I leave with the comfort of knowing Tasmania is in far better shape than when we first came to government in 2014. Now, when I became Premier, I said I wanted to lead a government of conviction, of compassion and one of opportunity. Uh, and to ensure that Tasmanians, no matter their background, their circumstance, that they would be able to grasp those opportunities. And whilst there will always be challenges, to have one of the fastest growing economies in the country, along with record levels of employment and a budget that is in good shape as we come out of a worldwide pandemic. These are things that I am immensely proud of. I want to recognise the efforts of two departmental secretaries that I worked most closely with over the last eight years since coming to government in 2014. Firstly, Tony Ferrell, who I've worked with very closely uh, as in his role as Secretary of Treasury. Thank you, Tony. Uh, your work has been outstanding. Um, Tasmania is very lucky to have you. To Jenny Gale, uh, the Secretary of the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Uh, Jenny, it's been fantastic to work with you. you know, not everyone knows this, but they will now. Jenny was my maths teacher back at Queechee High School, and it's been my privilege to work with her uh, in this role um, as uh, I've been Premier. I want to thank all of the Tasmanian government staff who've demonstrated an ability to rise to the challenge of the pandemic when it was needed. They were able to swiftly scale programs to help Tasmanians and businesses at a time when it was needed most. I sincerely want to thank the COVID management team that I have worked so closely with over the last couple of years. Darren Hine and Donna Adams, Catherine Morgan Wicks, Dale Webster, and especially Dr Veach and his public health team of Dr Scott McEwen and Dr Julie Graham. You know, they are truly outstanding in respect of both their knowledge and their experience, but also in terms of their work ethic. 
uh, and I want to thank them sincerely. You know, I've spent, well, we've spent a lot of time together over the last couple of years and uh, I'm very thankful for their sage advice and for their hard work. Our response to COVID was, I believe, the best in the country by any measure. You know, we were the first state that took the step to ban cruise ships when it was needed. We were the first state to close our borders, uh, which was quickly followed by other states. And we quickly turned what had been a 200 year disadvantage, being a small island at the bottom of uh, the Australian landmass, into a, a major positive for the state. Uh, it's one that, that came with cost, um, you know, that impacted on people. But at the end of the day, it was the right thing to do. And Tasmania has been able to emerge from a worldwide pandemic, as I've said, with a nation leading economy. Jobs are at a record high and the unemployment rate is at a record low. However, without doubt, the greatest highlight for me as Premier has been the courage and compassion of Tasmanians. There is nowhere like this place in the world and the examples of common humanity and kindness that I have witnessed over the last two years uh, will remain with me, stay with me for the rest of my life. And I want to thank Tasmanians sincerely for their efforts. They have been fantastic. I've advised the Governor of my decision and I will remain as Premier until the party elects a new leader later this week. I will also resign as the member for Bass later this week. Given that, there will be a need for a recount, uh, an account back in Bass, and I'll be providing advice to the Governor to prorogue the Parliament for the coming week and then bring the Parliament back uh, directly after Easter. Uh, importantly, any days lost will be able to be made up. Finally, and once again, um, and most importantly, I want to thank my family. Uh, my wife Mandy, son Finn, daughter Millie, um, they have just been outstanding in their support. They have enabled me to take on um, what I think has been you know, the best job in the world that anybody could have leading this state, albeit through difficult times. But they have supported me every step of the way and I will be forever thankful. As I've said, it's now my time to prioritise them. I know that I leave the state in a good place and with a team who can build on the foundations that have been laid. Goodbye and thank you to all Tasmanians. Look, it hasn't. Um, I'm somebody that gets up and gives 110% every day. And what I've found after the last two years especially, that I've got nothing left in the tank to give. You know, I, I have uh, worked as hard as I possibly can every single day that I've been Premier. And as I've said, I've got nothing left in the tank. And unless you can give 110% to the role of Premier, um, you shouldn't be doing this job and I can no longer give more than 110%. It's absolutely my decision. I informed the Cabinet um, this afternoon and the Parliamentary Liberal Party. Uh, I've just spoken with uh, the Governor uh, and with the Prime Minister, uh, as well as the Director of the Liberal Party, and let them know in the last 20 minutes uh, what my decision is. Have the recent resignations of Jane Howard and Sarah Courtney in last year's cycle without a rules influence your decision at all? And not at all. Um, look, they are the sorts of ups and downs that um, you have in political life. Uh, I'm just simply, uh, as I've said, uh, I've emptied the tank. I've emptied the tank. I've given everything that I possibly can. In the next coming weeks, how will you refill your tank? What will you be doing? What's next? Well, I'll be doing as little as possible for as long as possible. Um, look, I'll be spending time with my family. Um, yeah, I've got a daughter who will turn 18 tomorrow. Um, I have a son uh, who's 15 um, and I want to spend time with them and I want to support my wife. Um, you know, she has provided unwavering support to me. You know, 20 years ago, neither of us thought uh, that this journey would 
uh, last as long as what it has. You don't get into to Parliament thinking that you're going to get re-elected time after time. That has happened. Um, she has set aside uh, her own ambitions. Um, she has raised our children, largely in my absence. Uh, and I thank her for that. And I want to spend some time and give some time back to them. When did you make this decision on and how long have you been willing to go? Look, I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, I must say, at Christmas time, um, and with the challenges of COVID, no, no, I'll just take the moment to explain my, my Christmas and New Year. On Boxing Day, I came back to, or I went back to Hobart uh, as a result of the border opening and the need to uh, provide leadership. I left Hobart on New Year's Eve and uh, drove to Bridport. I spent four hours in Bridport, um, which was meant to be four days. Uh, that night we had an increasing case count and about 8.30 I think it was the numbers came through and I was walking on the beach with my wife and I said look I've got to get back in the car and I've got to get back to Hobart and I then spent most of January uh, in Hobart managing the pandemic. You know, my wife and, and kids um, have just been outstanding in their support but that period through Christmas completely drained me and as I've said, uh, I've got nothing left in the tank to give. Who would you like to become next Tasmanian Premier? That will be a matter for the party room. Um, and they will go through those processes. And as I've said, I, later this week, um, a new leader will be elected and uh, a new Premier, the 47th Premier of Tasmania, will um, lead the state. Whoever it is, there will be someone that Tasmanians didn't vote for. And you called Tasmanians to the poll a year early and your your popularity was obviously one of the main reasons for that win. So, do you regret calling the election a year early? Because it could have been now, Tasmanians could have had the choice who it would be. In 2020, um, I wasn't an elected Premier either. I stood up after Will Hodgman resigned uh, and, you know, I hope, well, I hope people think that I did a pretty reasonable job. Uh, and I'm certain that the next Premier of Tasmania uh, will do equally a good job as well. Do you lead with the support of your cabinet? Look, I informed my cabinet today. Um, I don't think any cabinet ever supports uh, a premier uh, heading off unless they've got problems with them. I've got a cabinet that I've had a really strong relationship with. Um, you know, they are good friends and colleagues, and I've worked with many of them for a long period of time. And so, you know, it's obviously uh, with some sadness that I, I leave them. Uh, but I know that the foundations that have been laid, the path that has been laid out, uh, is one that a new leader uh, will be able to uh, uh, make their own, and importantly, um, make their own decisions about as they move forward. Do you have another job lined up? No, no I don't. Um, uh, in fact, uh, what I'll be doing is, um, is doing some, uh, some reading and some gardening and spending time with my family. Um, but no, I have no jobs lined up. Will you stay in the north, do you think? Or will this be your home again? Absolutely. Look, I cannot wait to get back and spend some time in Launceston, to be frank. Um, the longest I've spent in my house um, uh, here in Launceston in the last couple of years was the seven days I had in isolation. Um, you know, that's the longest period that I've uh, been under that roof um, continuously. Now, uh, I think that probably says it all. So, look, if I could, in finishing, um, once again, just say to Tasmanians, you know, thank you for your support. You know, together, you know, we took the smallest state through a pandemic. You know, we created one of the safest places on the planet to live in, importantly, one of the best economies and strongest job, job markets in the country. You know, thank you for your support, for working with me. Uh, goodbye.